Hi, I'm Emily Washburn and I work here at First Baptist Church. And this is the story of Samuel, my son, and how God answered our prayer. At 30 weeks, I went for a normal checkup. And um, with the girls' pregnancies, everything was normal. And so far, up to then, everything with Sam was normal. Um, and I went for that normal checkup and Dr. Odie was a little concerned. I had started um, dilating and um, thinning and he uh, just asked that I be put on permanent bed rest and I had already started a little bit of preterm labor. Dr. Odie told me, you know, stay on bed rest, we'll make you take this medicine and we'll stop the labor and you know, you'll be smooth sailing. Let's just make it to 36 weeks. And I hit 36 weeks and had to quit taking this medicine and um, thought, well, you know, Dr. Odie said 36 weeks, everything will be fine. And when I stopped taking that medicine, labor started full force. And um, I was not really concerned. And I went into the doctor that day um, for my checkup and Dr. Odie said, you're already three centimeters. You have got to go. There's no stopping labor now. I got the call that she was going to the hospital. so. I went to the hospital and met them there. And then the labor wasn't very long. It was, there was some weird complication with the umbilical cord or whatever, but the doctor delivered and everything seemed to be fun. And so after the delivery, uh, Emily told me to go get the girls. So I went to the waiting room and I remember walking in there. I was, I started to well up with pride, you know, because we didn't have a boy and, you know, I almost choked back the words when I told them and then we went in there and everybody saw him and the family came in and saw him and everything was good. I went and got Emily a cheeseburger. Every time she had a baby, she always had a Wendy's cheeseburger after her baby. So I would go to Wendy's and get the cheeseburger. So that's what I did. She called me and I had to come back and uh, nurse sat us down and talked to us and told us that, uh, well, they were cleaning him up and they were, you know, when they were um, just kind of getting him ready, they noticed that he wasn't breathing right, he was breathing wrong. The doctors came back in, they checked him out, and then they said he had to go to the ICU. That's where, you know, that's how it started. That was the, the downhill turn on, on day one, but that was kind of, the, that was day one. My name is Joel Washburn. I work at DoorSwap Software, and this is the story of my son Sam and um, our interaction with God uh, in that situation. I grew up in a family of three people and uh, I told Emily in the seventh grade that we were going to have three kids two years apart and we had three kids two years apart. Everything to that point had been surgical, you know, perfect, perfectly executed to that point. So I didn't expect anything different about this one. We were really good at this game so I just expected things to go well. He was six pounds, 6.4 ounces. Um, he was crying and, you know, I just thought everything was perfect. He looked perfect, he had a good color. And a few minutes later, um, a doctor rushed in and said, we've rushed him to the NICU, um, he's not breathing. Um, we're, um, got him on a cannula right now. Um, things aren't looking good. We're probably gonna put him on a ventilator. The only thing that you can do at that point is pray. Um, the NICU doctor at that time, we had two of them. It was Dr. Clore and Dr. Goody. And it was Dr. Goody that came in and was talking to us. And he said, there's three possibilities here. It could be wet lung pneumonia or respiratory distress syndrome, RSD. My first prayer was, everything's gonna be okay. You know, this is God's plan. Um, things have not gone my way since week 30 but we all know that our plan is not the perfect plan, God's plan is. So my first thought was right then and there, I just have to lean on God and know that God's gonna get us through it whether I walk out of this hospital with my child or I walk out of here without my child. There were nights and days where thoughts would creep in my head of, did I not rest enough on bed rest? It's so hard to, to not lean on God in a situation like that. I was just praying for Sam's health. I was just praying for 
this to be a minimal thing for us to, um, you know, just get through this thing because I didn't have any information. I didn't have any information about what was going on really. And I mean, obviously you can't just walk down there in the ICU unit and, and hang out. It's a very controlled environment. So we didn't have, it was a black box. People would come in and out of it and then they'd give us more bad news and then they'd go back in there. And so um, for us, you know, I, I was just, praying as hard as I could pray and, and asking family members to do the same and friends to do the same and uh, really just praying for Sam's health and to Sam to get through it because I just didn't have the information at first, you know. I just, I just prayed that it would be God's will to save my child, but at the same time, I had to pray that if, if that was not God's will, that God would strengthen me enough to hold up and to be able to explain that to Sam's sisters because they were looking forward to having a, a brother. Between the time that he was born and the time that he went into the NICU, it had only been probably 30 minutes and then from the time that he was in the NICU to being put on the vent was only a, probably about an hour, an hour and a half. They were doing all kind of blood cultures and just trying to rule out, you know, what is it? And um, again, we were just praying for wet lung. They were able to rule out wet lung and then of course we're praying then for pneumonia. I mean, of course you don't want your child to have pneumonia, but it's the next step up. And so we began praying, okay, God, just let it be pneumonia. Because one, they are already giving him antibiotics for pneumonia. And then two, it's not the worst case scenario. Of course, we find out that it's not pneumonia. And the next day, the next morning, they've ruled that out. Um, or what they think, they're pretty sure it's not pneumonia. And he does have RDS, respiratory distress syndrome. He said his lungs, it's like there's peanut butter in them. They just won't open. And uh, there's no chemical in there to thin it out. The mucus is too thick. And um, they are gonna. They were trying to kickstart it with um, surfactant from an animal and um, it wasn't taking, it wasn't taking. And, and after so many tries, he, he started to prepare us. He's, he's like, you guys need to be prepared for the fact that this might not take and your, your child you know, may not breathe on his own. It was just, like I said, bad news compounded on bad news compounded on bad news. And like that one was when the doctor's telling you you need to prepare yourself that your your son's gonna die. You know, uh, there's, there's a real possibility of that. It, it was, um, that was the, I mean, it, it didn't get worse than that. That was just kind of the breaking point. That was the, that was the, the deepest hit, you know? I just reached out with my foot and felt solid ground in that fall. We, I just kept looking for God and he presented himself and it was just a platform to stand on. I just told, I, I told God in, in my own heart, my own mind, I told him, I said, uh, I said, look God, I said, you may take Sam and if you do, I'll use this experience to build up my family. But if you let me have Sam, if you let me have him, I will raise him in a way that honors and pleases you, and I will do it through example. And uh, and then the machines came off, you know? And then uh, 12 hours later, 24 hours later, whatever, he's a kid again, I mean, he's breathing. After that, I realized where my focus should be, what my stewardship is, what my important ministry is, where my, where my family ministry is, and, and what I should be doing, and what I should be focusing on, and what I should be spending my time and my resources on. And uh, I've just kind of tried as hard as I could to stay to that path after that. After that. At first, we were just praying for Sam to get out of this situation, and then towards the end of it, we were just praying for guidance from God on, you know, where our lives go from here and, 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 and you know, what is our mission in life? What is our purpose? And so um, 
you know, the prayers changed drastically through the course of the event. I just prayed that God would use the circumstances for the better and that God would not harden my heart or that I wouldn't have a hardened heart for the circumstances, whatever they be. It, like Joel said, our prayers changed every day, every hour. We were up there. We could, there, the rotation schedule for going to visit, we could visit any time from noon to five and then from like eight to midnight. And we were up there on rotation every three hours and we did not miss the time that we could go up there and pray over him. All of it was way bigger than, than us, right? This situation uh, it woke us up to the idea that, um, you know, this is God's story. He absolutely answered our prayer, um, but it, he did it, he, he changed our direction, you know. So what we were originally praying for was very um, centered on Save Sam. And, 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 and what happened was, is we walked away from that, that situation as a family of five, but as a family that pursues God instead of, you know, the direction that we were going in. And um, I mean, that had to be done. That had to be done. So now we understand. We understand why that we had to go through that scenario. It, it allowed me to recognize what my purpose was, why God put me here, what I'm supposed to be doing. And now, spending time with my children, spending time with Sam, and just my, my purpose here as father, as husband, is so much bigger than me and my desires. It changed our lives. It changed everything about the way we live. It changed the, the about who we are. And and um, and I, I couldn't be more grateful for this, for, for everything, you know. My word is undeserving. I'm undeserving of this family that God's given me. Um, I'm undeserving that God saved Sam, yet I'm so deserving of the God that I serve because of what he's done for me. I'm undeserving of the godly man that God's put in my life to serve this family like he does. We are such a close-knit family. We rather spend time together than do anything else on the weekends. We don't, I mean, it's just, th this whole situation, like Joel said, has totally refocused us. Um, and for that, I'm just, like you said, grateful. It's, but I'm so undeserving to have the family that I have, but yet I'm so grateful for what God has done for me. He, he, he answered our prayer by changing our prayer. Mm -hmm.